A special mention goes to Cornwall Scaffolding Limited for their support. Well, it's dry, it's bright, light cloud in Torbay, particularly here at Plainmore, the home of, uh, well, obviously it's uh, officially Torquay United, but Truro City used Plainmore for this season at least as their home abode in the National League South. And today, for game number five of the new season, they welcome the Kent team, or if you prefer South East London, Welling United, who uh, have been around their uh, no mugs, I can assure you of that. And this is really their third season in National League South after relegation from the Premier Division. It's going to be another tough day for Truro City, who are desperate to get off the mark because they don't want to be sucked into that bottom four any further, do they? Uh, they're winless. But that's not the case for Welling United. Out of their first four outings, they've won two and lost two. And Truro City sadly lost here on Tuesday night against Chippenham Town by two goals to one. So caretaker boss Ben Harding uh, reacts to that by making three changes out from the back line. Well, they played 3-5-2 against Chippenham on uh, Tuesday, but today he's, uh, he's opting for a 4-4-2. In theory, a 4-4-2, but of course, it can be amended to a 4-3-2-1, whether they attack or defend. Uh, Paul Bignett is out, and in comes uh, Billy Palfrey. He'll play uh, on the right-hand side of that uh, four-man back line. Austin Booth comes in for Noah Keats in the central midfield area. Um, the manager using um, uh, Booth's, uh, shall we say, uh, physical presence to hopefully uh, nullify the Welling tactics and Lloyd Garner comes in for Tom Richards alongside Booth in Truro's midfield. The referee for uh, today's match is all the way from Preston in Lancashire. It's David McNamara. Well our main sponsor today is the independent newspaper, your weekly best for Southwest news and sport. The Independent is the West Country's sporting bible. The newspaper that's first and best with all the sporting action from Bristol to Penzance every Sunday. We have match action, reaction and analysis, plus all the latest news from clubs and people playing football, rugby, cricket and more right across the West Country. Plus a 36 page news and features section packed with entertaining reading. Why troll the internet when you can find everything you need in one convenient place. Uh, Welling United through John Paul Kissick. Good ball player. Here he is again, smallest player on the pitch. Forced to pass back to Brian Barrett, very experienced Brian Barrett. Ed Palmer gets it away for Truro. Good solid defending by the former Taunton Town man, but Richard Orlu takes it to the goal line. This is good play by Brendan Keenan and a shot comes in, blocked by the Truro defence, and another block, this time by Hartridge. Truro have to defend for the first time, playing wide right of the back four today, Ed Palmer. Not far for him to travel to play more. He lives in Totnes, Palmer, so uh, just down the road, and his fellow centre-back, Richards, lives in Newton Abbott, so <laughs> it's uh, on their doorstep, as it were. It's a 200 mile journey for the uh, Cornwall supporters to make and a lot of them don't like that move but the fact is that they had to vacate Trio Road otherwise the proposed deal to take Truro City into the new stadium for Cornwall and share with the Cornish Pirates rugby team would be dead in the water and um, they'd had no option other than to make that deal work and so they had to come to play more. Uh, very hurriedly and that shot was slightly hurried by Niall Thompson didn't cause any trouble for the goalkeeper of Welling Dan Wilkes 22 John Paul Kissick seeing a lot of the ball he's the, the man who makes the engine tick in midfield very busy despite his diminutive size and Welling trying to thread that ball through from Thierry Odell and the first corner goes to Welling of this Saturday afternoon now how good are they at set pieces well in comes the big men and the goal it is a goal they've scored Thierry Odell the most experienced player in the Welling United side well he's put them ahead from a Jack Jeb corner that's how good they are at set pieces Danny Mills went for it 
He missed the ball, but it fell invitingly for Odell to score, would you believe, his third goal of the season. In only the fifth game for Welling United. And in the 15th minute, it's Welling who take the lead against Truro by a goal to nil. So that's not the start that Truro City wanted uh, because um, that was the first set-piece move of the uh, afternoon and it ended with a goal to Welling United scored by Thierry Odell, vastly experienced player and uh, Welling it is who make their mark very early in this game and that's a good ball in the turn. Oh, what a turn that was from Danny Mills. And that ricocheted off Captain Jamie Richards. It comes in again from Charles Banyer, but outnumbered by Thompson and Palfrey. So Truro City, how can they react and respond to that uh, bit of a, a shaker from Jack Jeb's corner? So Truro trying to get back into this National League South game against Welling through Niall Thompson. Niall Thompson, it's a good cross as well. Ooh, just went over the head of John Paul Pittman. Good defending by the very tall centre-back triumvirate of Welling United. The very live and listen main striker for Welling. Jeb's corner, well headed away. Got to say that was excellent defending by uh, Austin Booth. And away again, second time by Booth. Mystic about what can be achieved at Truro despite the temporary loss of home. These are the, in inverted commas, home games for them, certainly for this season, 2018-19. Depends when the stadium for Cornwall will be built. I know the foundation, the work on the foundations in that, on that new stadium in the, in the outskirts of Truro. They've already begun. That's a good ball played into Danny Mills. And he went spectacularly for that. And the shot comes in. It's a lob. Ooh, and it just went over Willacott's head and his right hand post. That was very, very good play by Welling. And in fact, they do get um, another corner in the 33rd minute and Jack Jeb's third corner for the visitors on the left in it comes oh and it evades everybody and thankfully for Truro City on the end of it was Riley Lowe to clear it from the edge of his area for a Welling United throw this is good play by the captain in Ijaha oh Ijaha again again blocked this time by Austin Booth, Ijar again, and Booth gets in the way again. He's getting his body in the way. Austin Booth, good play, but Welling, they can't prevent Welling from getting their fourth corner of the first half. Brian Barrett leaves this. There's Welling again, come forward. This is good play by Keenan, Brendan Keenan. He's got good feet, hasn't he? Look at this. Can somebody tackle him? Well, the answer is no, but it comes off a deflected shot. He wanted support there. Keenan just begging for support for somebody to play it to, but he's very, very tricky. Niall Thompson and Riley Lowe standing over the ball. Thompson dummies. Riley Lowe with his left foot. Flicked on. Ooh, at the back post. Danny Wilkes' back post. Just a bit too quick for Jamie Richards, who was loitering with intent. Thompson on the right for Truro City. Taking on his man, doing very well. Has been checked by Banya, goes round Banya, very well played. Now Thompson and gets a corner. This is a good start by Truro City to the second half. They had an equally good start in the first half, but then uh, it all petered out. And let's hope they can keep the uh, the intensity going now. That was good play by Niall Thompson to win that corner. So it's Riley Low. Both hands go up this time. Now I wonder what that indicates. Well, Austin Booth's moved into the six yard area he's moved out again probably with a little bit of help by Thierry Odell grabbing his arm it's a good corner as well goes over Dan Wilkes's hand Dan Wilkes got a touch to it back in by Tyler Harvey Ed Palmer's in there as well but so uh, tall tall defenders of Welling United Truro bring it forward through Riley Lowe Gardner Partridge. Good ball from Austin Booth. Beautiful crossfield ball to Niall Thompson brought down on his right foot. 
Thompson looks at options. A good ball in. Oh, what a save from Tyler Harvey. Super save. That was absolutely terrific goalkeeping from Dan Wilkes. Tyler Harvey got on to that, fastened himself onto Niall Thompson's cross, but was foiled by the excellence of Dan Wilkes and David Ijaha. Swelling come away with Kissick. Kissick, an angled ball to the Welling left-hand side. Brian Barrett back to Kissick. Chuck Jeb, nice little layoff to Kissick. Out it goes to Brian Barrett again, taking on his man. Oh, this is good play by Welling. Oh, and he's made a lot of ground here, and it's a good job. Jojo Willacott was alert, saving on the floor with his uh, left boot. Yeah, Wilkes has and landed himself in all sorts of trouble to Thompson. Thompson, he's going to equalise. He does equalise. Niall Thompson has equalised. Oh dear. Well, Dan Wilkes, who made a tremendous save 12 minutes into the second half to keep out Tyler Harvey. Well, oh dear. He's only got to look at himself to say, oh, what was I doing? He nearly led in Thompson the first time. But Thompson didn't make any mistake from the second opportunity he had. And Niall Thompson, as he did against Chippenham on Tuesday, scores again for Truro City. 20 minutes gone in the second half to make it 1-1. In fact, the double substitution here. Austin Booth is off. Lloyd Gardner coming off. And we have Jared Lewington and Jordan Cott coming into midfield for the aforementioned Booth and Gardner. Is uh, Lagoul first touch of the ball for the Welling substitute? But oh dear, not only over the bar but over the stand and out of the stadium. Kissick again to Danny Mills, just dropping his shoulder, moving away from Ed Palmer. Brendan Keenan on the ball, running at Hartridge. Keenan right footed, and it goes, and it's 2 1 to Welling United, and it's a goal for the substitute, Mark Bradley Goldberg. Bradley Goldberg, son of the owner and chairman, Mark Goldberg, scores. And that's after Truro City had given the ball away in midfield. Very good play by Danny Mills, dropping his shoulder, moving away from Ed Palmer and offloading to Keenan. Keenan to Goldberg and Goldberg, just after half an hour's play in the second half, regains the lead for Welling at two goals to one. So a free kick to Welling, who lead 2-1. This is a familiar story now unfolding for Truro City. With nine minutes left to play of normal time. Can't see there being a lot of stoppage time in the second half. Three and a half minutes of added time in the first half due to two injuries, but the only stoppage time so far will be for substitutions. Brian Barrett, clever ball to to Goldberg, heads it down to Mills. Mills still with the ball. Mills is still there. He, he tries to dribble past all of the Truro City defenders and nearly succeeded as well. That was very, very good play. Truro City with the throw. Partridge. Jordan Cott, lovely crossfield ball, gorgeous. That's a really good play to Billy Palfrey. Now, what can Thompson do? Gets ooh, overhead. That's uh, very clever by Jared Lewington. Tyler Harvey cleans it up though. Back to Alex Hartridge. Hartridge deflection off the back of Keenan. Riley Lowe on the edge of the Welling penalty area. This is Jordan Cobb, lovely ball through to Tyler Harvey. Good save at his near post by Wilkes. Harvey again, but off target. Three minutes to play for Truro City to salvage something. Otherwise, it's going to be another home defeat. It'll be their third of the seasons. So early on, three successive home defeats.
over uh, Petrero, which is uh, not good reading. Billericke, Chippenham, and another one looming now against Welling United, which really uh, doesn't make pleasant reading. Brian Barrett with Welling's throw on the halfway line. He made a few, he made a few feet there, and noticed by uh, not noticed by the referee. Lovely back heel there by Goldberg to Keenan. Keenan keeps the ball well. Look at this. He's got past three, three Truro defenders. Four squares it. Oh dear! Headed away by Palfrey. In it goes to Goldberg. Goldberg misses the target, but offside. An offside against Keenan. Keenan just danced his way through the Truro City defence there. Welling have forced eight corners all told. Truro's two. This is the third corner. And they'll just play now, play possession football. Keenan's involved, Jeb's involved. And it's a throw into Welling. Truro know the game is up. Time is nearly up as well. Two and a half minutes of added time already played as Welling United inch closer to a valuable away win. They do like Saturdays, don't they? They always win on a Saturday, but don't win on a Tuesday. Thankfully, there are no midweek games coming up because we have a doubleheader next bank holiday weekend. Danny Mills takes it towards the corner flag again, still keeping possession, but this time they concede Welling a throw. We'll have to get on with it because we're in... Uh, the third minute now started the third minute of stoppage time. Welling can see another throw. The manager telling his players to get on with it. The manager being Ben Harding, of course, the interim boss of Truro City. But they lose possession. Oh dear, Danny Mills out of play. Throwing quickly taken by Hartridge. A backheader by Pittman. Tyler Hervey onto it just outside the penalty area. And they get a corner. First one they've had. This will be the last action. This will be the last action of the game. And it's going to be Jordan Cop to take it on the left hand side for Truro City. Truro City's last attempt to snatch a point against Welling United. 2 1 they trail against the Kent team. Cop leaves the corner. And it's going to be Thompson to take it to the back post. time from Niall Thompson's corner it was Lewington the substitute one of the substitutes for the White Tigers who heads it firmly past Dan Wilkes to salvage a point in a 2-2 draw